In today's video, we're going to be taking this lumber, creating these strips, and arranging them in a way that creates a chevron pattern. Ultimately, we'll be creating a cutting board that looks like this. If you want to know how I did it, stick around, I'll show you how. Okay, so today we're going to try something a little bit different. As you can see, I've got a whole bunch of lumber milled up. We've got a combination of walnut, lighter color walnut. we got maple, and then all this over here is maple. And I'm going to try a chevron pattern today. Okay, so here are the different pieces that I've selected. If it looks like I'm working on my kitchen cabinet or kitchen counter, it's because I'm working on my kitchen counter. I don't yet have a workbench in my garage yet, so I've laid down some parchment paper for the glue up so I don't get any on the granite countertops. I'm gonna be very careful there. Um, <clears throat> so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look to arrange these in a pattern to where it is symmetrical and the pattern repeats itself both ways. So what I'm gonna do, I've, I used my square to draw a perpendicular line and then I've got a 45 degree angle coming out here because whenever we go to cut this after the glue up, we're gonna be making a cut across here. So I need to make sure that as I line up my boards, all of the lines at least come past this line so we get a nice clean edge on the miter saw because we're gonna take that through the table saw afterwards to, to create the chevron pattern. So you'll notice that this is Pretty rough sawn at this point. I just milled down some lumber uh, yesterday. Um, I'm gonna arrange the pattern and then I'm gonna look to see if there's any joints that need to be squared up before glue up. So let's get after it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is you'll notice there's a couple of different areas where there's a pretty significant gap because I didn't actually plane or joint these whenever I was creating this wood. I actually just came through and put it through the table saw. So this lumber is still pretty rough, uh, which means that if I were not to leave it like this before gluing it up, there'd be significant gaps in the wood. So, so if these are the two surfaces that you're trying to mate up and, and glue, you can see the gap in there. Not my camera work needs some. Or you can see the gap right there in between those two pieces. If you lay both of these face down and run them through the jointer together, you create a nice flat surface for both of these to adhere to. So we're going to go give that a shot. Okay, so we got the glue up done. I used a lot more glue than I normally would because the last couple of projects that I've done, I've noticed a couple of gaps in the joinery and I'm trying to avoid that by over gluing. Created quite a bit of mess and a lot of extra cleanup. I'm not gonna flip over the boards right now because I don't wanna take them out of the arrangement and out of alignment like I've got. So <clears throat> I'm gonna leave everything the way that it is right now. One positive thing, and I just measured this, but I'll do it once more. My thickness planer can take 13 inches, and this is 12 and a half. So what that means is before I start cutting the 45 degree angles for the chevron pattern, I can actually take this and run it through the thickness planer on both sides um, and get it nice and, and even um, in terms of thickness before starting to cut it up, which 
uh, will help simplify things on the back end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this dry. Whenever I take it out of the clamps, I'm gonna flip it over. There's gonna be a lot of glue residue. Typically, whenever it's up against, whenever the glue's up against the clamp or it's face down on parchment paper, it doesn't dry. So once this is actually set, so I'm gonna give it a, you know hour, maybe 90 minutes. Uh, I'm gonna flip the board over and let the underside dry, and then I'm gonna come through with a chisel and knock off all the dry glue before running it through the planer. So we'll be back in about an hour and a half. So whenever I was making this 45 degree cut, I had my camera mount attached to the table saw. And whenever I started the table saw up, the camera footage came out all shaky. So I'm just showing a screenshot here, but you can see I'm running this through the table saw using the jig that came with the DeWalt table saw that allows you to cut at a 45 degree angle. Um, and after I had that first cut made, I used the fence to reference against that edge to create the one and a half inch strips from there on out. So as you can see, all of these kind of line up to what it was originally kind of planed and cut at, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to take every other board and we're going to flip it around just like this. That's going to allow us to do is to create a chevron pattern. Try to over squeeze this one as opposed to taking it back to the planer or the jointer and trying to make these gaps go away because then these perfect chevron patterns won't line up anymore. Uh, actually turned out pretty good so anyway we're gonna kind of sand this down and then we're gonna glue them up and get them in the clamps Okay, so we've taken the cutting board out of the clamps and I'm not gonna run it through the planer just yet because um, I'm sure it'd be fine, but I'm worried about these sharp edges catching the tip of the knives of the planer. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this first. I do not have a cross cut sled yet. So I'm gonna use this um, little jig that comes with the DeWalt table saw as kind of a starting point. I'm gonna to try to keep this as square as possible, but it's I know it's not gonna be perfect because there's a little bit of play in this. So I'm gonna to try to keep it to uh, as close to square as I can. And once we've got a straight edge here, we can reference that straight edge to cut the other side and get a nice parallel edge. So here we go.
Okay, so we just got done doing 120 grain. We're gonna lightly spray with water just to raise the grain, make those fibers stand up, and we'll come back and knock them off. And now for my favorite part. This is where we get to put mineral oil on the board and let those grains just come to life. Enjoy. I'm really happy with how this board turned out. The way the chevron pattern came together and then the richness of the walnut and the maple, I felt really complimented the board. I want to thank you for watching the video today. I ask you to subscribe and drop a like if you enjoyed what you saw today, and I'll see you on the next one.